What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I have a 36 volt EasyGo PDS golf cart. A buddy of mine dropped it off the other week. It sounds like it needs a motor from what he's describing where the motor's going and it's, it's starting to get intermittent and it's starting to cut off and stuff like that. Now it doesn't run at all. However, on this video, we're going to run through all the circuits on the PDS controller and test out everything to be sure that all of our micro switches and our key switch and F and R switch and everything else from the controller itself is working fine. We're also gonna to try to test the controller as well. This golf cart does have a lithium battery in there, so it might be a little bit different from yours, but anyways, let's just jump right into the video. All right, guys, so we got this PDS 36 cart here. It's been lithium swapped. This is how it came to me, and this is what we are working with. So they've been having some fun with this right here, out in the mud. And uh, it came to me with the cover off, so we're gonna test some wires on here and run through all the circuits and see why this cart isn't working on today's video. All right, so what I have for the test, just a standard multimeter, nothing fancy. This one right here came from Harbor Freight. My black lead is actually going to an alligator clamp here, to an alligator clamp down here, okay? And we're gonna test everything with our positive lead. The customer did have a 12 volt battery in here for his accessories, we're not worried about that. We're just worried about getting it running because it came in non-running. Now, this is a PDS cart and we're gonna test some of these plugs down here as well for power, for like the switches and stuff like that. So we're gonna try to go over everything on this video. So number one, power. Do we have power? What's the power we have? So I'm gonna just touch my positive over here, 39.98 volts on this battery, so the battery is charged. I guess before we get started, I'll show you exactly what the golf cart's doing. Key switch is on, reverse, nothing, forward, nothing. The solenoid's clicking down here, and you can hear it click when I press the accelerator. Put it forward. Once I let off, it closes. So we have a solenoid click, but it's not going. So let's test everything. I believe we can test everything directly through this harness right here. So let's go by that one by one. All right, so we're gonna start with this white wire here. With this white wire, we should be seeing pack voltage there and there, so we do. And this white and yellow wire here is the return wire going into the controller. See, there's nothing there. Turn the key switch on and we have voltage. So the key switch is working. The controller's outputting voltage to the key switch and we're also returning voltage from the key switch back to the controller through that white and yellow wire there. Now the yellow wire there is sending power from the controller to the solenoid. We got it there and we have 39.8 volts there. That's with the key switch on. Now, if we turn the key switch off, we should draw power. And we do. See here? Power is being dropped. Turn the key switch on. We now have power. So that is sending power from the controller to the solenoid. Now, since this is a lithium battery, it no longer has the stock OEM receptacle. So it lets us know the read switch has been bypassed. So let's see if the read switch has power. Let's see if the tow run switch has power as well. So that's our tow run switch. Right now it's on. And let's see if the read switch is connected to the power as well. And how we're gonna do that, the bottom two left pins, red is the bottom left, and the one beside it is gonna be red and white, which is gonna be the read switch. So let's go ahead and get started we should have power on both of those because it's on so the red wire here that's on there is our tow run switch we have power there 
and our reed switch. We have power there. So we're good on the reed switch. We're good on the tow run switch. All right, see the bottom three right wires it looks like a orange, a gray, and I can't tell if that's a, a green or whatnot beside the orange there. That is gonna be for the F and R switch. The gray should be output. So we should have pack voltage output. And then once we connect the uh, forward or reverse, we should see um, the same pack voltage going back to the controller. Let's us know if the controller is outputting pack voltage is also letting us know if the F and R switch is good as well. All right, so I have my test lead in the gray. That's your output. And notice we have 39.94 volts. And up here, it's in the neutral setting, right? Let's put it in Ford here. I can't remember if the Ford is orange or the next one. It's gotta be the next one. That is it. It's not orange, orange is reverse. So Ford, we have 39.94 volts here as well. We're gonna take this and put it into reverse. We're still there at 39.64. Come over here and we're going to pop that into the orange as well. And we're at 39.93 as well. So there we are, the F and R switch works as well. So we're good to go there. Notice the voltage has dropped out when we went back to neutral. All right, I went ahead and placed the light on here. This next connector is gonna be kind of hard to see here. Let's see if we can get the camera down here. We have this harness here, which is a four pin harness, okay? That is gonna run the pedal switch and the ITS or the ITS. Pull that off here. See, we have there, we have red, green, black, and white. White and black is going to the ITS or inductive throttle sensor. The red and green is going to the throttle switch. Red is going to be output, green is going to be input. So red should have voltage on it at all times or when the key switch is on. And green should only have voltage on it when the throttle is pressed and the uh, micro switch engages. All right, so let's test this right here. So I got my voltmeter out not connected to anything be sure the key switch is on be sure to put it in either forward or reverse come down here we don't have to have that plug hooked up it's going to be the second one sticking in there we have 39.92 volts so we have power going from the controller down to the micro switch all right i have the test lead into the green which is the first leg of that harness there we don't have any volts. Key switch is on. F and R switch is in forward. We're gonna press the throttle. You hear it click. We have 39.56 volts. Let off, we have zero. Hit it again, we got 39 volts. So it lets us know the micro switch is working fine. We've already tested the green and the red. We know that the micro switch is working good. Next, we have black and white. White is gonna be output going to the ITS inductive throttle sensor or the ITS, whichever one you wanna call it, okay? The white wire is gonna be the output. The black wire is gonna be the input or the return wire. So the white wire is gonna show like 14 volts, I believe, output. And when the pedal is all the way pressed down, we should see around 2.9 volts or something along that line. So we can actually test the white wire with the harness out just to be sure that we have voltage there. Let me get a one-handed operation here. We do 14.5 volts. Key switch is on, F and R switch is in forward. The pedal is up, okay? With that being said, we got output to the ITS. Lead is in the black connector there on the return. We're at 0 0.91. Let's press the throttle all the way down, see what we get. 2.76, so give or take, the ITS is working fine. 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to check the solenoid, and this is gonna be a little strange, so just bear with me. On the power side, we have yellow here, and the yellow is leaving the controller and it's going down here, okay? And we have 39.91 volts. But check this out. On this set of solenoid, which is the blue wire, we also have 39.61 volts. And we have that because when the controller is not activated on the solenoid circuit, it's outputting the blue wire positive signal. But once it activates, it changes from a positive to a negative. So once we connect this right here across this terminal, we're at 39.62 volts, okay? Now how I'm gonna test this is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the alligator clip from my main negative. I'm gonna put it over here on this right here cable, or this right here solenoid um, small connector. I'm gonna take my red test lead, I'm gonna put it over here on the other small yellow uh, solenoid connector and you see we're only getting 20.28 uh, volts. So now the solenoid isn't working, right? Because we're not showing any volts. But if we connect these right here too, and now I could use my foot to activate the solenoid through the accelerator, this right here changes and it shows you packed voltage, which is 39.52 volts and it's holding. Now it's holding because I'm holding the solenoid down. Well, the accelerator pedal. I lift it up, it clicks back, and it goes back to zero. Negative on the negative post, positive on the positive. We're at 39.92 volts. Let's come over here. On this right here, positive input here. We're at 39.35 volts, so we have power going to the controller. Next thing we're gonna do is to check the output of the controller. Now this right here is the output leg here. I went ahead and removed the negative from the battery negative to the output negative here. We're gonna take our positive. We're gonna place it over here on the positive. We're reading 33.14 volts. Now, as we hit the accelerator pedal and push it down, the voltage should go up. And it does, we let off of it. So we should be good to go there. So I believe we might have a bad motor, which that's what I was kind of expecting to begin with from what the customer was saying, but this right here just shows you a great way to diagnose the controller. All right guys, so I have a video about testing the motor. I'll link it at the end of this video here. There's no need to bore you on this video. Um, another thing to do is if you have a lithium battery, turn it off. Uh, be sure to put it into tow mode. I already did that here. I should be good. If you don't have a lithium battery, go ahead and remove like your main negative or main positive or both of those, just so nothing shorts out once you're wrenching on your motor. You don't want to accidentally touch anything and fry anything else if nothing else is the matter with your cart other than your motor. So, you know, kind of a short video. Just want to throw that out there. And that's pretty much how you test a PDS motor here um, on a golf cart. So controller, not a motor. What am I talking about? So anyways, with that being said, appreciate you guys watching today's video. Until next time, we'll see y'all later. Bye.